Hello everyone, how are you? This is yours truly, Triple G, coming at you yet again with another episode. Today is July 15th, 2018, and today I am showing you a guitar, Ibanez, Iron Label, uh, what's the model name? It's uh, F-R-I-X-6-F-E-A-H. It's a quite the uh, alphabet soup. Really do think um, Ibanez needs to come up with a different, somewhat of a better uh, naming scheme because, uh, you know, it's, it's a hellacious. All right, so with that, uh, this guitar was not perfect when I got it. So let me uh, rewind and show you troubles that I had to go through. So uh, right now you can see I don't have any strings on it. Um, I, you know, and it, it got here a couple days ago. Uh, I traveled across country. Now, if you remember, uh, by the way, today's date is July. Um, what is today? July 11. So um, during the heat wave um, that blanketed the country, that's when this guitar traveled. So I don't know if the fret sprouting that I'm seeing right now is the direct result of the board fretboard drying out thus shrinking. Um, I don't know if that's the result of it. However, just yesterday I also got um, Wild Audio Bullseye, which I... Um, took a picture of it and showed it on my uh, Facebook page. So that traveled basically during the same uh, period of time and that does not show any fresh sprouting. Uh, so that said, um, if you remember, I have another iron label Ibanez that I showed off several months ago. That thing also had fret wires sticking out um, kind of sharp. So that was the only downside of that guitar and this one just coincidentally is also an iron label um you know again with the unfortunate um fret wire sticking out just a little bit and i tried to reintroduce a little bit of a moisture back to the fretboard to um what's the word a re oh the word escapes me Anyhow, I try to um, reintroduce the moisture back to the board um, so that it absorbs some moisture. Now, th through that practice, however, I did notice the uh, ebony fretboard was uh, dyed heavily. So now I, um, but you you will see some um, streaking going on over there. That's because the uh, black dye that was used used on ebony kind of seeped out a bit. So. Um, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to go get me a uh, file and I'm going to uh, tape the uh, the fretboard exposing just the wires only and I'm going to file all the edges down so that this becomes playable because the tone is huge on this guitar. I love the uh, I love this guitar the way it looks, the the, the color, the understated just on a, you know, on the shamingly just a pure rock machine. I and you know it's got the neck that I love a lot so this is gonna be something that I mess with you know often and I don't want to contend with this bullshit fret wire just sticking out cutting my uh, finger I actually already suffered a cut on this finger here as I was running it down the other day so that I'm gonna take you through that process and uh, we'll come back later Okay, so we are here right uh, now on my work table and the guitar is here and I have uh, masking tape basically put on in between all the frets right there. Well, the camera can focus hopefully. Okay, so I'm ready to file this stuff down. So I am going to now bust out the little one of these guys and start filing away. Off I go. Okay, so now that we're back, let's take a look at this guitar. Uh, okay, so uh, up close and personal, familiar Ibanez headstock look, the matte satin stained um, what, what charcoal stained flat finish carries through ebony fretboard and like i said um before 
the ebony was probably dyed to be blacker than what it really is because when, when I tried to reconstitute, I mean, I use that word loosely. I was just trying to reintroduce some moisture to the fretboard. Um, you know, the black dye came off on the uh, cloth that was covering the fretboard. And then charcoal stained the flat uh, color carries through. You see the nice ash top with the grains showing. EMG 81 in the bridge, 60 in the neck. Gibraltar 2 bridge. Kill switch, single volume knob, three way selector. Gorgeous, really just uh, classically done, um, just tastefully done white binding around the body and the neck, which actually carries all the way to the headstock. Mahogany body, and you know, um, the quality does. Um, you know show in craftsmanship like the uh the cavity cover is recessed so it's a flat right here so um that's quite a nice uh, nice touch nine volt battery cover shave the heel joint so you could get up here in the upper register with, um, with comfort and um the body contour for the belly cut all right so just when you look at this guitar, it's just very, um, I mean, to me, I looked at the guitar and fell in love instantly because uh, it's very uh, understated, and, but you, you, one look at it, you know what this guitar is made for. Um, oh, by the way, so the back of the neck, it's a three-piece neck. It's a wizard, nitro wizard something neck uh, with the maple and then purple heart carrying through. Um, it's probably my favorite neck out of all the guitars, whether that's Jackson, whether that's PRS uh, pattern thin. Uh, it's a uh, 19 inches, uh, 19 inches, 19 millimeters deep at the uh, at the nut, and 21 millimeters deep right here at the 12th fret, uh, something like that. So it's very, um, very comfortable for me. I, like I say uh, previously, I have a small hand and you know, thinner the neck is, I can get around a little bit easier for me anyways, cause uh, you know, I suck and I kind of need uh, to be able to maneuver around the neck well enough. And because of the obvious satin finish here, going up and down the neck is uh, smooth and lovely. The nut, um, Somewhat plasticky looking, but it is well cut. Um, very precision cut, if I may say. There is, it, it's just really nice, and the grooves, uh, nothing, the strings not getting caught. Um, and the Goto locking tuner, quality, classy touch right there. Now, I do prefer having a tone knob, um, and you know, if I can engage the tone knob to 10 to just fully crank it, you know, I would like to have that option rather than just having it completely gone away. So what has happened was, you know, on my practice amp, I have it dialed to a certain patch, certain tone, and then, which I use basically with, you know, whatever the guitar that I ha have hanging, uh, hanging around and I plug it in, I noodle around, whatever. So without making any change, I plugged this guitar in and it was a little, it came off a little bit brighter than what I had um, expected compared to other guitars. So had I had the tone knob here, I would have just dialed that back a little bit to tame it a little, but because of that, now I had to go to the amp and uh, you know dial it and change the EQ there. I know first world problems. So. Um, that's, uh, you know, not having the tone down make it slightly less versatile. But, you know, biggest problem that I had with this guitar was exactly what you saw earlier. And coincidentally, it is uh, exactly the same problem that I had with the iron, another iron label guitar, RG... Uh, shoot, the model name esca escapes me. RG IX6? Yeah, yeah. This is, okay, so I'll uh, put a little 
link to that guitar's video right here and maybe like a picture of the guitar here so you could see what I'm talking about. That guitar also had the fret wires hanging out so far out it was literally cutting my fingers up and down when I was going up and down. So that exact same problem exists on this guitar. Now with that said the brother of this guitar in my opinion which is the Prestige RGR 652A something AHB I, I forget so this I also own this guitar which is very uh, similar looking right but I think this is all ash uh, there's no mahogany body um, this is a prestige line so it is made in Japan not Indonesia and it's got different appointments but there's no problem with the fret wires hanging out of this guitar out of the box so you know, when people say, you know, Japanese made guitars are better than, you know, Indonesian made or, you know, whatever made. Every now and then that is true. So, um, with this guitar, I had to, uh, file down the fret wires like you saw earlier. And now it's in much better. Um, so, but, you know, said with that, the... You know, pickup set. The, the guitar is obviously just gorgeous. Now, when you look at this guitar, is it a single cut or is it a double cut? Because this upper horn here, you know, it's kind of it's too pronounced for it to be a single cut, but it doesn't stick out enough for it to be a double cut, right? So it's a kind of unique, but here's the deal. I love the size of this guitar. This is like so perfect. It's not big. I, I haven't compared against like a Jackson Dinky, but the size of this guitar, I you know, when you have when you have it strapped on, you know, or just sitting around playing, it's just perfect. Um a very understated look, but just just all tuxedo, right? Black and white, just perfect. The neck is so super nice. I uh, love playing on this neck. Um, the tuning is solid. Once you uh, have it locked in, it's uh, it, it's good. Obviously, without you know floating trim, that also helps. And you know the EMG 81 and 60, I am you know they get a lot of bad rap, all right, uh, because of their somewhat ster uh, sterile tone and uh, just maybe not as organic. But here's the thing: they are depending on what the application is they are perfect for certain flavor that you may be going after so you know back in the 80s you know the 90s or whatever uh, with metallica the emg was the flavor of the day then like last decade bare knuckles were the all the craze and um, with the gent movement, I, you know, like with the, the, the Duncan, Nazgals, and Sentience, and Pegasus, those were, um, uh, you know, hot for a while. And then now, you know, fast forward to 2018, you know, Fisherman Fluence is all the craze. So with that said, um, you know, I still do feel that you could stick EMG pickups on any wood and they may produce somewhat very similar tone. Uh, regardless of the tone wood that was used because they somewhat overpower and overtake the um, you know, the makeup of the guitar they have that uh, very EMG signature tone but you know they have a very focused attack when you're playing you know chugga chugga metal and you know because and they give you um, somewhat of a compressed very um, like I said you know focused attack on your uh, tone uh, you know if the metal is what you're going for you know you will have uh, you could have worse problems than having EMGs on board so with that said I mean this is a guitar that um, just kind of hangs out in my home office here and I just grab it every time and I just uh, mess with it and uh, because of the uh, standard bridge here with a locking tuner I do have a liberty of uh, jacking with the tuning every whatever that I'm working with and not having to worry about having to you know worry about tuning stability all that much of course when you go from certain tuning to another tuning the intonation becomes a little bit of a problem but um, going from even to semi tone and um, even all the way down to the one full step change 
the I, I've noticed the intonation doesn't change all that often. Now I did get this guitar at a phenomenal deal. Um, the guy was selling it at you know in, in, in an original Ibanez box with all the you know case uh, protection stuff in it, and I uh, bargained him down to what I paid. I think it a uh, street uh, street price that goes for this guitar is about seven ninety nine, but uh, you can definitely find a deal whether that's a guitar center holiday coupons or you know even use the market like what how i got this because i mean it's flawless other than the uh the, the fret wires that were hanging out which i addressed so other than that i mean there is you know how satin guitar if you play a lot it develops you know a bit of a polish but obviously nothing like that exists on this guitar that i had acquired just really sharp looking guitar couldn't be happier with it um it's the size of the guitar that I really like, and it's uh, you know it's kind of a shape that's not commonly found, even though it resembles a uh, Telecaster. And um, you know what this guitar also reminds me of is a Jackson Dominion that's used by um, Mar what's his name, Morton, Mark Morton, what's his name? Jesus Christ! I the other guy's Willie Adler. What's the other guy's name? Is it Mark Morton? Do I? Uh, now that's gonna bug me. But anyhow, so I think this guitar goes really well with a uh, little brother here, RGR652 that I also have. They are very similar looking. But this has Demarzio Fusion pickups. Um, is it five piece or nine piece? I I, I forget. But the neck is different. And uh, so anyhow, couldn't be happier with this guitar. I wanted to share this with you. All right, so with that, that wraps up this episode. I, I just think I just talked so much. Um, hopefully I come back with another episode soon. Until next time, you guys all take care.